This is Dream World Audio and it's time for questions and answers. MFR58 asked me a question about wave and pressure mode and, and here is his question and I'm going to answer the first part of it today in this video because uh, second and third part I will answer them later for now. This will still make a sizable video but uh, I'm trying to make it as compact as I can. And basically he asked, can you explain the difference between wave mode and pressure mode in sound propagation? So first I thought of a, a little explanation by making a comparison with ocean waves and then about uh, a comparison and showing how a base reflex uh, port behaves. That's another excellent... Uh, way to differentiate, to, to show you what's the real world difference between wave mode and pressure mode. The port is the best thing to do it because it works in both wave mode and pressure mode and does very different things at that. However, before I go into that, I'm going to uh, show a much simpler way, a very graphic way. I'm going to use a blackboard and my finger to draw, uh, draw it for you, it will be quite uh, gory, it will be quite uh, violent. So those of you who are of a more uh, sensitive spirit, more sensitive nature, please fast forward five minutes. And those of you who want to see <laughs> action and some excitement, just keep tuned in for the next five minutes. And here we go. So basically, uh, being uh, in a room is the same thing as uh, for the air being in a loudspeaker. So here we go. So this is us. We are inside the room. That's the same thing as the pressure waves or the uh, sound waves are inside the loudspeaker cabinet. And uh, they need to go out. So basically, there is a door that needs to be opened from the room and if the door is big enough we can walk out of the room unhindered right so that's how wave mode sound propagation works that the air is free to go into the outside so there we will have our little guy walking freely without change without alteration so that's wave mode propagation and that's what happens with the horn loudspeakers and the various forms of transmission lines, including mass loaded transmission lines, void pipes, folded void pipes, and so on. In all of those cases, the, when you imagine the cabinet being the room, uh, the, the door, the port is the door, but the size of the port is big enough and uh, that the sound waves can exit the, the, the loudspeaker cabinet without alteration. Now, what happens when we are making the door smaller and smaller? So, if we are making the door very tiny, so actually, first, let's just make the door like half size, then we have to uh, squeeze through the door, but we can still exit and the door is even smaller, then we have to go on all fours and then just crawl through it. And then when it gets really tiny, then you have to lay flat on your belly and crawl through that uh, small opening. But what happens when we have that situation that we have uh, a port size opening uh, in our room and we have to, we have no choice, but we need to exit through that tiny hole. Uh, we can't. However, there's tremendous pressure in the room and pfft, it will just squeeze us through that and we will come out as hamburger, right? And now, when we come out as hamburger, uh, yes, we are outside in the room, but we won't be like we were inside the cabinet. So something has fundamentally changed. And uh, the problem is that this sort of transformation that's going, that's happening 
then, uh, then the air exits the uh, loudspeaker cabinet, it's much, much worse than this scenario. Because in that scenario, you left the room and you are good. But that's not what happens in a cabinet. There what happens is that once you left the room, you have to go back in, back and forth, back and forth. So the loudspeakers, they do not push the sound out and then it's check mark or done. No, they push the sound out, they pull in, push, pull, push, pull. So they are making this uh, push, pull movement with the air. So basically, uh, first things looked okay on the inside. Now it's going forced out through the port, becomes a mess. And now this mess is sucked back in and it becomes an even greater mess. Now it's pushed out, even greater mess. So like imagine like a couple hundred uh, back and forth movements and, and this uh, like uh, meatloaf will <laughs> start to look worse and worse by each passage through that uh, undersized port. And uh, that's why I told everyone to skip this part because it's, it's, it's not for the faint of heart. And uh, if you think my analogy was too harsh and it cannot be, then I will show you first the analogy with ocean waves, it, which is more friendlier, uh, but uh, you can imagine uh, easier and get it much more easier what's going on. And then with the subwoofer ports, which relates much more to the actual uh, thing that's happening. So basically, with the, with the ocean example, then when we compare wave mode with pressure mode, that's the same thing as uh, comparing a regular wave in the ocean to a tsunami wave. Pressure mode sound is exiting the port just as a tsunami wave is exiting the ocean and crashing on the land. And wave modes are exiting the uh, cabinet just as regular ocean waves are uh, coming to the shore and, and uh, crashing normally and then coming back. And, and they're just keeping their frequency, they're keeping their length. And uh, all, the, all the ocean waves that are, that are coming to you, whether it's a big wave, whether it's a small wave, which means it, this is the exact analogy of uh, high frequency and low frequency sound waves, they propagate together at the same speed. So the ocean waves are coming constantly at, at a very friendly rate. The tsunami wave is very different. The tsunami waves are propagated by extreme pressures. So when there's an earthquake, that gigantic pressure that the earthquake produces, it's going to propagate a pressure wave. But because there's that heavy weight of ocean on top of that uh, pressure wave, it's going to travel at the bottom of the ocean. And when we are reaching the shore, where there's very little uh, uh, ocean body on top of it, then the wave starts to emerge. And, and it's not traveling at the same speed as the other uh, waves in the ocean. It's, it's traveling much, much faster. And while with the regular waves, you will be able to see uh, this, this shape. So, so when, when an ocean wave is coming, so let, let's say this is the propagation direction, then you see uh, the front, the wave front like rising up, and then there you see the dip. So this is the same as the uh, sound waves are also propagating you in, in this fashion. And then you can nicely see that there is this nice curve to the ocean wave. But when a tsunami is coming, it looks really nasty. And, and you cannot uh, guess very easily the frequency of the tsunami wave based on uh, the footage that you are watching. Uh, so, just recapping. When you have the regular ocean waves, they consist, uh, propagate at a consistent speed with clear, well-defined wave fronts. And the main thing is that when those uh, 
those ocean waves, they reach the shore, there is a smooth energy transfer that's happening. That, that, that's, uh, that's how the, the process finishes. And, and when we have the... Uh, so this is the analogy of wave mode uh, base production. And now the pressure mode uh, base production, that's when we have a tsunami uh, wave, which means that it's propagating at extreme speed and, uh, and blah, blah, blah. But the problem is that X, when it uh, exits into the room, there is an explosion that uh, creates turbulence. So the energy transfer is not smooth. And, and for those of you who don't, who have no idea what I'm talking about with the pressure wave, uh, I mean wave mode and pressure mode, uh, I mentioned this in uh, some of my previous videos, basically wave mode based response production is the property of uh, ultra efficient uh, loudspeaker cabinets and pressure mode based response production is the property of uh, base reflex cabinets behaving like modern subwoofers with low f lower efficiency drivers and when the diameter of the port is very little compared to the uh, the amount of air that needs to be squeezed out so basically in application for wave mode source you need a very big uh, port, a very big opening, so that we are not pressurizing the output. And for pressure mode, we need a sphincter to squeeze through that uh, column of air, and then uh, we will have the problems that come with it. But we also get the benefit that we can have very low frequency base response from a small cabinet. So that's the price to pay, is that we have turbulence to get low frequency out of a smaller cabinet. Now, let's see. Base reflex port behavior in wave and pressure modes. I think uh, let's make this into a second video to keep the videos uh, more concise and tight. So let's continue from here. Thank you guys. Please... Uh, like, subscribe, so other people can like and uh, subscribe to this uh, little informative channel. And uh, thank you, MFR58, for your fantastic question. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.